Joining me right now is Brendan Peterson, Punchbowl Financial Services reporter and author of The Vault. So, Brendan, as we know, clock is ticking. Sunday, 12.01 a.m. is when it all comes to a, to a halt here. But what are you hearing so far, the conversations about the likelihood that anything can be done to avert a shutdown at this point? It seems all but assured at this point that we're going to have a government shutdown. The question is how quickly Congress will come together to eventually have a package that funds the government, even for a short amount of time. Uh, just this morning, we reported that the House Republican CR stopgap bill would fund the government through October 31st. Um, that's something uh, that's not as long as the Senate's stopgap bill would do. But there's still a lot of like red meat policy priorities in that House Republican bill that are probably not going to pass the Senate anyway. So the chambers are too far apart. It doesn't seem like we're going to reverse a shutdown at that point between now and that 1201 deadline. And when you look at the last shutdown that was 35 days long, do we get a sense when you think of the political climate that we're in now mm -hmm. that it could be longer than that? It, there's really nothing that you can rule out at this point. When you're thinking about exactly how long past shutdowns have gone, Past shutdowns have had discrete policy disagreements, right? Like the 2018 shutdown was really about the border funding and what Trump was trying to do and what House Democrats didn't want, a singular fight. With this, the goalposts keep changing. Republicans cannot make up their mind about what they are actually mad about, whether it's securing the border or abortion policy or Ukraine funding, the list goes on and on, right? It's really just a handful of members within the Republican Party that are gumming up the works here. And so when it comes to like just how long the shutdown is going to drag out, it kind of falls to them as long as Kevin McCarthy continues to try to work with them. And it's interesting because when you think of where we were in May, you had this bipartisan agreement. Now, as you mentioned, you have a lot of these cross currents coming into play. And when you look on social media and on, on some of these call-in shows, people are frustrated, but they're frustrated at the government as a whole. But then they're bringing in this issue of, of the border and also funding an aid for Ukraine, saying, why is that aid going to Ukraine instead of going to the American people? It feels like a lot of these cross currents are really getting tied up in something that was already agreed upon in May. Why do you think this is happening? It's a great question, and it's, it's a question that has reverberated around the Hill for a little while now. I mean, a lot of the conversation revolves around the House Freedom Caucus. A number of them have, if not openly welcomed a shutdown, um, they have certainly been pining for it. Um, I think there is an expectation that a government shutdown, while it might not reflect great on Republicans, Biden is the head of government, President Joe Biden. He is going to look at least a little bit bad if the government isn't functioning, if, if workers are not getting paid, if, if service members are not getting paid as a result of the shutdown. So you have to kind of squint to see the math here. There are titanic risks for both sides. But at this point, like the fighting has been so concentrated within the Republican Party, it's hard for me to see how they would avoid taking the brunt of the blame here.